I think that's like a key thing as well. Um, just getting people into Bitcoin in general, but as you say as well, pay, take, making them take the next step to to taking care of and custody and taking their own keys, uh, holding their own keys. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's very much like uh, if if you if you make it like something they are already aware of or used to, right? Like if you make your app somewhat similar to Amazon or or banking apps that they already use, then it makes it so much less scary for someone. Like I remember when I first got into crypto. And uh, I first got into my buddy was like, hey, buy some XRP. So I was like, all right, yeah, sure. So, uh, <laughs> so he's walking me through this. And I remember at the time, like buying some, and I didn't know what I was doing. No, you know, no idea what really, you know, what, what crypto really was. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got a Coinbase account, a Binance account. I'm buying something on Coinbase. And I'm sending some, and I, I bought Bitcoin, turned to Litecoin for some reason. And I think it was quicker. And you send that to Binance. And then, I'm, you know, the fear that strikes you when you've sent some money from one to the other. And you have no idea if you've done it right or not. So there's always those things that are terrifying. And Binance, to me, at the time, was like, what the hell is going on? There's these charts everywhere. And I don't know what's, where to start. So um, I can totally get, like, why people need that simple uh, experience especially to push them into to taking care of their own funds one thing maybe to mention is uh, we don't want to make it too simple for people because people are always going to choose like most people are going to choose uh, uh, the path of least resistance and if they are for example able to skip uh, like uh, writing down their seed uh, they are going to do it in majority so uh, it's important, like a big part of onboarding and making it easier for people is education. And we just have to explain uh, why they do what they do and why it is so important and why it's not advisable to cut corners there to some custody that promises to take care for you. Because this is not what Bitcoin is about. Bitcoin is about financial sovereignty. And... Uh, if you don't want that, you simply are not ready for Bitcoin, I would say. But I believe uh, it's not such a big uh, leap for many people. It's not such a big mental leap from using uh, mobile apps, from using uh, various social networks and such to using uh, a Bitcoin wallet where they control their own keys. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's... It's a small step, but you have to make it. In light of self-custody, what is your opinion on um, custodial lightning wallets like Wallet of Satoshi or Blue Wallet? I believe this is okay because you are not dealing with huge amounts in there. Uh, you are not going to have like $10,000 on a custodial lightning wallet. Uh, you are not going to have $10,000 on any lightning wallet probably. So if you have like... A, 10 or 50 dollars on some on some wallet it's not such a big deal if you lose it uh, especially not like for us westerners it might might be a big deal for uh, someone in el salvador and this is why i am sort of concerned by chivo uh, being a custodial wallet and i believe uh, uh, people should uh, or people should like maybe we should uh, make a good job in explaining the difference between open source self custodial wallet and like a uh, governmental closed source non custodial wallet yeah uh, yeah not a big deal uh, as not su such a big deal as uh, keeping your life savings on an exchange yeah i would say but still it's better to use something proper like uh, running your own Lightning node and connecting Zap with that. I think most people would agree with that. I I, I find things like Blue Wallet was super easy to to onboard people yeah. into Lightning. So I just think yeah. it's like, oh, no disagreement. Yeah, uh, definitely easy. I uh, well, a bit of a random question, but um, it just popped into my mind actually because I've seen it on Twitter loads recently. Uh, are you a uh, well, I think it's, I can't remember what it's called now, but you were when it comes to denominations and, and things like that, are you a bit sky or a sat sky or are you a uh, 0 0.005 whatever guy? Like, which yeah. you go for? I, I used to be, um, uh, I used to be for Bitcoin and uh, just going with uh, uh, you know, decimal points, but uh. Like after Bitcoin going over ten thousand uh, dollars, this is becoming quite unworkable. So I'm a sets guy. Yeah, 
And uh, I love that Lightning Network uh, works in default with Satoshis. I know, for example, Vlad Costa is a big bits guy and uh, I'm a big fan of Vlad, but I believe this is a wrong hill to die on. We are going for sets. I, I like this argument because, um, yeah, as you said, I saw Vlad actually talking about it. And I saw someone else talk about it the other day as well. I think maybe, I think John Carvalho was talking about, uh, I can't remember which way he stands, to be honest. But, um, and I saw Vlad passionately on the, the bits side. I think, I think it's funny because th there's importance to it, right? Obviously, you know, you want to get it, the, 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 the unit you know, of account or whatever correct so that people who are new to it are not as intimidated and it's clearer because I find like I go into a wallet and sometimes it's like MBTC or it's SAMT or it's this and I'm like what the hell and like it's auto set and I have to find and sometimes it just winds me up um, so I get it but it also is one of those things that there's not really too much of a you can't it's not like the the block size wars there's not like an ultra practical reason behind like a preference I think a lot of the time it's just what we know slash what we feel is sensible maybe yeah yeah it's not a consensus kind of thing it's uh, just front-end ux and uh, sure if somebody wants to have bits in their wallet they can choose to do so they can choose to switch uh, we are going to have uh, satoshi denominations in trezor suite uh, in the future right now it's just bitcoin and fiat uh, there is going to be satoshi as well uh, we are not going for bits or at least i am not aware of that are you Joseph Stackerman on Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was looking through your profile and I saw that you like meat. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I noticed that a lot of uh, Bitcoiners are you know, very um, strong, aggressive advocates for meat. And I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not very really religious when it comes to my diet. So I wanted to ask, what what exactly is it that you know I've seen similarities? Lots of Bitcoiners like Saif, you know, are very aggressive on their positions on eating meat, you know, meat, 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 meat. And so <laughs> please explain it to me, you know, like I'm five. Explain it to me why, you know, explain this, you know, this stance to me. Uh, so um, uh, the book that changed my view on like what kind of diet I have is uh, Paul Saladino's Carnivore Code is uh, quite famous in this community, uh, like in a carnivore community. And yeah, uh, this is the term for the diet, carnivore, carnivorism, basically, where you eat uh, mostly meat. Uh, and it's not just steaks, it's organ meat as well, like liver and heart. Uh, and uh, you can eat some fruit uh, and such. And the idea behind it is uh, for millions of years, uh, humans and their predecessors basically thrived mostly on meat. And uh, uh, the Neolithic revolution, where we started to cultivate plants, is just 10,000 years ago, and we haven't adjusted to it as much. We are not herbivores like, uh, for example, gorillas or chimpanzees are. Uh, their digestive system is totally different to us. Uh, we can eat plants, we are basically omnivores, but uh, the optimal diet for humans is uh, animal-based, basically, animal-based fat and protein. And uh, Saladino goes into like both the evolutionary perspective and into like biological perspective. Uh, for me, uh, everything improved, basically. Once I started to adopt uh, uh, animal-based diet, uh, my eczema disappeared, uh, my digestion is my, much better. Uh, my, you know, brain fog, or how to say it, uh, lifted. My mood improved. So it's uh, it's um, pretty amazing, actually, what it can do to your body to have the proper diet. Yeah. And uh, but like uh, the main uh, problem for most people is uh, they eat uh, processed junk food. You should basically eliminate, you know, processed food, seed oils, uh, excessive sugar and such, and you are going to be pretty good off. Uh, then if you want to be even better off, uh, you can uh, adopt this uh, like animal-based diet. Yeah, I've found, because uh, I've done in the past, like I think it was like a month of being vegan, and then I did a month, like a month later of being like mainly meat. 
It's like <laughs> literally both complete opposite. Because I, because like from a feel like moral standpoint, I'm, I'm not overly decided yet, and and also I, I'm lactose intolerant anyway, so yeah, didn't really make much. Being vegan wasn't really. It was just like, stop eating meat. That was basically it, really. Um, and so I tried both, and it's mm. funny how like both gave me like this oddly different sense of feeling healthier i think but i think as you as you've hit on though it's like you, you stop eating a load of processed foods you're paying more attention to what you're putting in your body so immediately kind of doing anything like that is going to help um, but as you say it's weird because like you know being on this like vegan stuff thing i felt healthier in ways but kind of weirdly like unhealthy in other ways and then being on the meat side i, I felt healthy in another way and like, it's very like you get these two different ways sure so um i think it's quite interesting to, to pick these diets like that but um I can see why you're uh, a passionate uh, believer in like eating like good uh, and good quantities of meat. I just, I don't know how you eat awful like like liver and like heart and things like that, and I, I can't do it. I know it's meant to be really good for you, isn't it? Um, like a friend of mine eats. Yeah, yeah it's totally uh, packed with nutrients, and they are very like bioavailable for your body. So yeah, uh, the taste you get used to it. Yeah, I think for me it's just getting around my head. I'm just like, <laughs> so I, struggle, I struggle to do it, but it's like kind of get get around that like in brazil they have colossal like chicken hearts so love it okay. yeah yeah well uh definitely with uh, any like radical changes in diet you should do your own research it's the same as with bitcoin uh i don't want to like evangelize anybody into making some radical change in their life based on some podcast just uh read the book perhaps the carnivore code and there are other uh, good uh, resources for that and make your own choice Yes, very smart advice. DIYOR, do your own research uh, when it comes to most stuff in, in life. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I guess we've we've run for a, a good sort of 50 minutes or so, so it's probably a good time to close things off. Uh, Ricardo, Jerry, was there anything you had, like burning questions you wanted to ask at all before we before we do so, or are you good? Uh, I had one. What's the single most exciting um, development for Trezor that's coming in the next year or so? Uh, during the next year, I'm uh, looking forward to... Uh, Tropic Square, because uh, as a part of Satoshi Labs uh, family, we have uh, a new startup that's called Tropic Square, and it is develop developing a secure element chip that is going to be completely open source, because uh, many hardware wallets use secure elements, which are closed source, and we are working on, or the Tropic Square is working on a secure element that would be open source, and uh, as I said, uh, it's aligned with our philosophy of being open and transparent and cutting no corners. So this is going to be pretty exciting once we see the prototype and then it uh, being used as part of a Trezor. So yeah, this is uh, what I'm excited about for the next year. Yeah, I agree. That is super exciting because that's one of the largest criticisms against Ledger and Cold Card is that they use a, um, a chip. Closed source. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, I like that. It's, uh, why I'm a fan of Trezor over the others, uh, myself, uh, things, ideas like that and the open source nature. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, uh, yeah, it's probably a good time to, yeah, call, call it the end, as we say. And, uh, I appreciate you coming on, Joseph. It's been, uh, awesome to chat to you and get some insight into your views and, and understanding of kind of, you know, a little bit of the background of, of Trezor and, and how, how, how they're running and what the plans are moving forward. And, Kind of what you've been up to so uh, it's been yeah fantastic to have you and uh, i really appreciate your time uh so it's awesome of you and uh thanks ricardo and jerry for joining us as well as as always uh, and also just a thank you to all the listeners essentially for listening in uh, we appreciate you um and if you've ever got any questions or anything just uh, drop us a, a message on twitter um but uh but otherwise uh have an awesome morning evening afternoon day week uh keep researching bitcoin keep learning and keep loving life and uh, we will see you all soon bye so meet thank you so much okay.